On this video, I'm gonna show you our brooder for our meat chickens. We're raising 800 Cornish cross chickens this year over the spring, summer, and fall. We're raising 100 at a time over eight different months. And last year, we raised them in a brooder in our garage is where we started them. This year, we're here in our farm garage where we're raising a bunch of them. I'm gonna show you our setup from last year. I'm gonna show you some things that we're testing this year. And uh, you can follow along and see what's working for us and what's not working and how we can help you reduce your cost, raise bigger chickens, and just kind of skip the learning curve. So this right here is what we raised baby chicks last year. We raised Cornish Cross. We put 20 in each one of these boxes and uh, we took some of that hay and we put it in these boxes and we had a infrared heat lamp. So it's like the little plate heaters and then little feeders and waterers that we put in here. But this year we're stepping it up and we're raising a hundred at a time. So last year was just 20 and this year we're raising a hundred at a time. So we're gonna do 800 over the year. This is our brooder that we built and you can see it has no floor. So the chickens are just gonna crap there and it's gonna fall into our hay, which we'll take out of here. So we'll just be able to replace this hay. I've seen other people put, um, like tarps down here and then they just throw it out. We'll just take this hay down and we use hay for our garden. So we're actually gonna take this down to the compost pile on a weekly basis, most likely drop it on the compost, mix it in with the rest of our hay and compost and let that kind of go in and then we'll use that for our, for our garden. So we're setting up the heaters now. All right, we got some heaters rigged up a little bit here. So the, the lid was a little bit too low for these to go in so we're gonna keep the lid open for a first week or two and then we'll put the heaters on top of the brooder the other thing that we were talking about is we're a little bit worried about the heat source of the heat lamps and this straw and hay so we'll see but here come the chicks They come. So these were hatched on Monday. They already have some of their feathers on them. Look at that. A hundred Cornish cross. Did you count them all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get pretty good at counting them. I bet. All right, we got our 100 chicks in here. A couple heat lamps, got some water, got the food on them. Lucy's holding them. She's gonna pick up all 100, give them a little bit of love. <laughs> no love. <laughs> no, no love. love. No love, because these are going in the freezer? Yeah. Okay. No love. These are Cornish Cross. We got 100. We raised 41 last year, 20 and 21, and uh, a couple enough. weeks apart. And it wasn't enough for our family, so we're gonna raise 800 this year. And this is our setup. They come in these little boxes. So we have a local um, local hatchery that hatches them. It's a young girl named Abby and her parents. Her dad's an extension agent for Tennessee, for Williamson County, uh, for the Department of Agriculture. And then this is our setup. Uncle Mark built all this. <laughs> we got two of them. So we got 100 in here right now. What we'll do is, uh, we'll, we just didn't, we just wanted to get the setup here. Once they get a little bit bigger, we'll put 50 over on this side. So um, that's what it looks like. These are built for 75, so 50 should be doesn't look like great. 100, does it? Doesn't look like 100, but we should count them. <laughs> One, Don't even try. two, three, four, five, six. Stop moving. Seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10 groups of 10. 100 for sure. These moon birds are even active at night, just eating and drinking nonstop. This is their first week, and I just popped in 9.30 at night to check on them first night here in the garage, and they are active, eating and drinking. They fill up their water, they got plenty of food, be all set. This water is actually doing really great. There's not a lot of poop in there. I really love it. It's great water. I'll kind of just show you around the build here. Uh, we built some 
Uh, supports down on the bottom for the casters, uh, all pretty much two by four construction. We have a screen and a lid here. Even though they can't fly, we have a cat that comes into our, our garage sometimes. You can see this is inside of our farm garage. So we were selling produce out of here last year and meat. I'm defrosting some, uh, the, one of the freezers, but we have a fridge, freezer. We run our CSA out of here. And here's the setup that we have going. We have two of them in here. We're gonna put, as they get a little bit bigger, we're gonna have 50 and 50 in each one. So you can see, we just lift the lid here and I'm gonna have to use another hand. But right here, we set up a little lever there. So it'll just kind of prop the lid open so you don't have to hold it. I've seen a lot of ones that have to uh, be held open. I didn't like that. And uh, some supports on the corner. You can kind of see the build. I actually wish, uh, now that we have it set up, I actually wish we built it a little bit higher. Maybe about four more inches higher or we just, put the, um, we just put the floor down another four inches, just because as, you, as I show you the heat lamp, the heat lamp just doesn't get high enough in here. It's a much bigger heat lamp than we thought. I'm gonna go through some of the setup that we have and the things that we're testing out this year. And this is our first time using these. So what we wanted was we wanted a floor that had openings in it so the chicken poop can just fall to the floor, fall through there, so we don't have to constantly clean it out. What I hated about our brooder last year is we just had to constantly clean out all the crap that these chickens uh, throw out, and it's a lot. Um, the other thing we're testing right now is this uh, poultry feeder. So this, we bought this at Tractor Supply. It holds seven pounds. I really love it. This is our first day using it, but I already like it a lot more than what we've used in the past. We're gonna test that side by side with this. I actually couldn't find enough of these. I wanted four of these, but I can only find one. So we went with this seven pound uh, poultry feeder here. What I love about it is we can just pour more food in the top. And so I don't have to take it apart. This, this kind of twists open. You might have to clean it out a little bit because the chickens will crap in there, obviously. Um, this is, we're trying out this poultry drinker here. So five quart drinker that just kind of spits water out as it needs. I, I really love it when they're in the brooder. It's a lot easier for us to handle when they're out in the chicken tractor. It's a little more of a pain, but we'll try this out. I'll probably end up putting two in each of these, uh, just depending on how much they're drinking and how big they're getting. But as they get bigger, I'm going to add uh, two, probably two of each of these in the, in the brooder. So we'll have two feeders and two drinkers. The other thing that we did today, um, once we got the chickens here is we added this little piece of plywood where we kind of screwed, we screwed it in to these two by fours. So that way it's a little bit more support. What I noticed was this is pretty heavy and it just, this screen is just not that, not that stable. So as the chickens get bigger, I think it'll hold the chickens, but probably not, you know, seven pounds of food and another few pounds of water. So that's one thing that we just added. Um, we, this is all pressure treated lumber. So everything that's in here is pressure treated. And you can see it's all caulked in the corner here. So when we get the chickens out of here, we're just gonna spray it out with a hose. So I'd encourage you to spend a little bit more money to get pressure treated lumber. So you can just hose it out when you're done. So these are some things that we're looking at and testing right now. Hopefully it helps you guys. This is the heat lamp that we got, these Premier One heat lamps. And you can see it has this, I, I, I left this here so you could see it has this cover on the bottom of it. When you get the heat lamp all screwed in, that cover goes on the top. Um, kind of a protective cover probably, but the problem is I, it was hanging down so low that I was concerned that the chicks wouldn't really get to it. So we're testing it without that right now and we'll just kind of see how it goes. Um, if any of you guys are like, you have to have that on for safety or something, let me know in the comments. Uh, so this is what it looks like right now. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. And then this is it in use. So one thing we did was we put we put some hay, we use hay all, all over our garden. We have three and a half acres of garden, we use hay. So we put hay down so when they crap, they just kind of poop down on the hay. Uh, we were a little bit concerned about the hay and the heat lamps. Heat lamps I know are uh, pretty known um, fire creators. So a little bit, we're kind of watching that a little closer. We had a lot more hay, but we want to just keep it kind of really low. You can actually see some of the chicken poop falling down on the hay. What we're going to do is we'll scoop up the hay um, after these chicks are done and we'll throw it onto the compost pile, mix it in with our compost and then put some new hay down. So every, um, every couple of weeks, we'll kind of see. It'll also reduce the smell in here. So before, you know, the chicken's just pooping down, if it's on the floor, if it's on a, um, if it's on a tarp, it'll just start stinking. I've been in places that smells really, really bad. So here, here they are. We got a hundred in here right now. These are about uh, five days old right now. So you can see they're already starting to get some of their adult feathers there on their wings, but they're five days old. Uh, in about three more weeks, these guys are gonna go out into the pasture. Um, but we, right now, for the first week or so, we've got three of the heat lamps in here. We're testing this out to see how it goes. It's pretty cold here right now. If it was warmer, I wouldn't, 
really bother with three different heat lamps, but it's gonna be in the 20s overnight over the next three days or so. Um, here's our water in action. You see, we've probably only gone down a couple inches since they've been in here from, for about four or five hours. They eat like crazy. The food is going down. So they've been eating quite a bit and the heat lamps just to just stay warm, go eat, go drink, and then they go back under the heat lamp. It's pretty boring chickens, but these are 100 Cornish cross. Chickens are all females. We're gonna grow these and put them out in the pasture after about four weeks old into our chicken tractors, which I'll show you in a second. And then we'll uh, harvest them between seven and eight weeks. But you can follow, around, follow along and see, this is our first hundred. Um, once they get a little bit bigger, we'll split them up into two, put half of them over in that brooder and half here. So that's what it looks like set up. And those are some of the thoughts behind what we're doing. If you guys have any ideas, uh, for me or anything that you know that I might be doing wrong, let me know. This is the first time we're doing this, but I'm excited to see how it goes. Uh, we harvested 41 last year in the fall uh, as a test, and now we've got this going. Um, I've got some other things that I ordered here for harvesting and processing the chickens, but I'll go through that on a future video. So uh, I'll take you outside now and show you the chicken tractors that we have. They're really nice. I'm really excited about them this year. All right, it's a cold, wet, rainy day here on the farm, but here is our chicken tractors. We got two of them. I got them from Aluma Coops. They're 12 by 12s. You can see the they have the bell water in them with a system where you can uh, put a bunch of water in the top here, a few gallons of water, and the, the hose, the tubing, will go through there and just feed um, feed the water. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna split this off next week before I put the chickens out here. I'm gonna split off a, uh, a tea to have two waters being filled up by that. Um, we've got feeders here. You can see there's a feeder here on each side. There's two on each side. So you've got four feeders where you can just go in and scoop food and drop it in there where it's uh, like a bin. And then this is really cool here. So you can see this lifts up the wheels so one person can just lift it up. So when you lift that up, it pulls this pulley system and brings the wheels up so you can just roll it along and uh, move it, you know, 12 feet each day. Uh, we got two of them. We're gonna raise 100 in each. So the, we have the 100 that are in the, bar, or in the garage right now, in the brooder. When they get bigger, after about four weeks, they're gonna come out here and they'll be in one of the coops. And then we'll, we'll put another 100 into the, into the garage. And every four weeks, we'll be cycling them. So we'll butcher them on a Friday. We'll pick the new ones up, you know, at the end of the day on Friday, throw them in the brooder and just uh, cycle them every, every eight weeks. So every four weeks, we'll be getting a new 100 chicken batch to do eight months of 100 every month. So to follow along, I'll just show you the, the slaughtering process and some of the things that we bought for that and uh, in a future video. So if you guys like this, please subscribe, hang out with me and follow along on this journey. We've also got three and a half acres of garden back there. We also built that new barn over there where we're gonna have our farmer's market and our farm store and everything like that. We've got about 100 chickens and ducks over there. We're breeding, um, we're incubating ducks, Tacky Campbell ducks and chickens for sale. We're getting our NPIP certification here in Tennessee and we've got a lot of really cool things happening on the farm. So follow along with us, subscribe, share the videos and uh, hope we can bring some value. If there's something that you guys uh, need or wanna learn about, um, just drop it in the comments and I'll make a video for you. See ya.